Hey guys, I do it's Cryptic here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over some CompTIA exam questions and answers. Obviously, if you need to make sure you know what to do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So today I want to go over some CompTIA exam questions because um, you know, who doesn't want to go over CompTIA exam questions? Like I you have to know this if you're gonna take the A plus stuff, right? So like sometimes I make videos like this where I go over A plus stuff because some people that watch my videos are literally taking A plus or are trying to get into help desk IT support and they're trying to get A plus certified. So definitely this is some good information. Uh, even if you have experience in IT, this is some good information for you as well. Maybe a refresher, if that makes sense. So let me share my screen and go over this stuff real quick. Should be a quick video. Um, and then after that, we'll wrap it up. Hey guys, how you doing? Good morning, good afternoon. I'm not sure where you're from, but wherever you're at, I hope you're having a great day. Today's video is sponsored by KevTechITSupport.com or KevTech Academy. Uh, we we have free low-cost, uh, I guess, courses for Microsoft Azure. Just pay what you can. And if you want to take another course, we have Server 2022, which is only 10 bucks. We have an IT support inter, uh, interview preparation course. And if you want to do coaching with me, it's only 125 dollars a month. We meet every week. I have currently have 10 students on my platform. So if you're interested in joining any of our any of our platforms, or you're interested in just doing a free course, like Microsoft Azure, just pay what you can right now at this at this moment. I haven't changed it. So I'm trying to make this affordable, try to make it reasonable for everyone. And hopefully everyone learns. Happy learning. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope this helps you out. Take care. Later, guys. Bye. Share my screen, 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 screen one. All right, so we're gonna go over some questions today. I'm excited because I haven't done this. I haven't done a video on this in a while. So, what is the purpose of a DDoS attack? That's question number one. So, obviously, um, there's there's a DDoS attacks as cold cold injection resource malware infection. Um, so this is literally resource uh, exhaustion. Uh, the reason why that's the answer is because when I work, when I worked at a, uh, I guess I worked volunteer, and I, so you guys could remember the information, right? Um, I I was a I was a uh, an admin or a moderator for Counter Strike Source. So this is the game Counter Strike Source. I'm pointing at my icon to share screen. So I was a Counter Strike Source moderator, and uh, I used to host a server. So when I host a server, they would do a DDoS attack. So they did a DDoS attack on my server, and then my server would stop working. I'm like, why is it? Why did Why did it stop working? Why is it not working? So we were affected by DDoS attack, and what it does is they do they exhaust the resources of your server, and then it completely attacks and makes it go down. So that's how you remember that question and answer. If that makes sense. So that was like one of my personal experiences that I had when I first started. I when I first started in IT. This was over ten years ago when we had CDs back then. All right, something to think about. Um. As opposed to a simple denial of service, the DOS attack that are usually performed from a single system, a distributed denial of the DOS attack uses multiple com uh, compromised computer systems to perform the attack against the target. The intimate systems that are used as a as a platform for the attack are the secondary victims of the DDoS attack. They often refer to as zombies and collectively as bot. That is correct. This is true. Go to the next question. A type of attack aimed at exploiting vulnerability that is, that is presented in a ready release software but unknown to a software developer is called zero day attacks. So this is a zero day attack. Uh, you can actually look it up online if you go online and search for it. So, like if I do this and I do type zero, zero day attack, it comes up right away. It says cyber security to take advantage of previously unknown vulnerability in hardware or software. So, like it's just taking advantage of whatever you have existing in your software or hardware as a flaw and, and and basically that's what it is all right so we're gonna go to the next question and it says here an email sent from an unknown source disguised as a trusted source known to the message receiver is an example of what so this would be spoofing this isn't malware because malware is something that you have on your that gets injected on in your computer messes up your whole computer this isn't a trojan horse it's pretending to be something that it's not and it's also a virus so it's definitely not that and then all path attack is 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 someone that gets in between two people, and I have the definition up here, and I'll show you what it is. It should be social engineering and spoofing. So what happens is you get emails like, let me see if I if I have an email I could show you. Um. So like, if I do have one, I, I probably don't have one. So let me just type spoofing. Uh. 
email examples. So I, I deleted mine like earlier today. I did get like a strange email that looked like it's legitimate, but it's not. Um, I did I did put it in the spam folder. Let me see if I could get you one real quick so you guys could see it. It looks legit, but it's not. It's not. It's not legit at all. It's, it's not. It's unlegitimate. But it looks like this. Let me share my screen right here. Here we go. So it looks like this, and I'm gonna zoom in a little as you probably could barely see this. So you get an email like this. And you're like, man, this is not legit. This looks really weird, right? So they got PayPal email saying that they just they just they just took money out of your account or they need you to log in to to because your password has been compromised. So it's like a fake email. And basically they want to get your information and, and also your password. So yeah, there's another one at Bill Gates, Bill Gates, B dot B dot Gates at .com. And, and you could use like um what I usually do is if I see a strange email or I see a strange attachment, I would go here and I go to virus total, right? And then I would just go here and then I would put the file in here and just make sure that it's legit. Um, if it's a, an attachment, I will put the file in here and make sure it's legit. So like, I'll scan this file and then confirm upload. Um, if that's a legit file, you shouldn't get any viruses. Or anything strange on it is it CrowdStrike, Avast, Avast, Bitdefender. Like there's nothing on this file. Obviously, if it's a file, and then if you get like a URL, you can put it in here as well. I guess this is my website, kept like Um, and then obviously your IP address. So you want to make sure that's legitimate. So you could use tools like that if that makes sense. So the answer for this one would be spoofing and social engineering. Um, we'll go to the next one. So question here is. Let's close everything. I have a bunch of stuff open. Uh, which of the following statements can be used to describe the characteristics characteristics of an on path attack? So, like, you're like, what the hell is an on path attack? What does that even What does that even mean? So, is a cybersecurity attack where an attacker positions themselves between two devices, such as a web browser and a web server, to intercept or modify communications between them? So, right away, it's it's it's, it's interfering between two two people or whatever, right? So, we know that it's this one. Attackers place themselves on the communication room between two devices, so we know it's this one too. Attackers intercept or modify packets in between two communicators, so we know this one's we know it's this one too. Attackers do not have access to packets exchange or that has nothing to do with that. Attackers generate forged packets, nothing to do with that. And on attack an on path attack is also known as XSS. No, it's not that either. So we're gonna continue. That's those are the three answers. And then this is this one is an attack against encrypted data that relies heavily heavily on computer power to check all possible keys and passwords until the correct one is found is re referred to a referred to as a brute force attack. I know that's the answer because it has happened to me. Um, which password attacks take advantage of your pre your predefined listed words? So this is this is a password attack, right? So I know this sounds weird. It's this one, dictionary attack. And if you go to the actual definition, this is a, an attempt to an, an, an attempt illegally ent entry to a computer system that uses a dictionary head word list to generate possible passwords. So that's why that's the answer. So this is the type of attack you'll see um, for passwords. All right. It won't be this one. It won't be this one. It won't birthday. It won't be any of those. Um. And this one's super obvious too. Which term best describes a disgruntled employee abusing legitimate access to companies' internal resources and insider threat? And if you want to find out more about insider threat, it's right here. So insider threat is a cybersecurity risk that comes from within an organization. So it's probably like a disgruntled employee or someone that's having a bad day in your company that they're just they're just willing to mess up or mess up and, and compromise your organization inside. So you got to be careful with this because that does happen in real life. There's a lot of like stories about this. So you got to be careful with who you hire and then be careful with people in general, right? Just make sure that they don't mess with, they don't mess around with stuff, if that makes sense. All right. So entry field of web forms lacking input validation are vulnerable to what kinds of attacks? And then this one is SQL injection attacks. Web forms always are vulnerable for SQL injection attacks. So the next one. Um, which which of the answers listed below refers to a counter countermeasure against SQL injection attacks? 
So this will be input validation is the answer for this one. And then this one, it says, which of the following missions can be used to describe characteristics of an XSS attack? So let's just look that up real, real quick. XSS attack. XSS, which is attackers inject malicious ex executable scripts into the code of a trusted application or website. So as far as trusted users' website has inside has any website, so that's that one. A malicious script injected into a trusted website, so that's correct. Uh, a user's browser... Browser execute attacker script. That's correct. So it's none of these other ones. Network access control. NAC, NAC defines a set of rules enforced in the network that the clients attempting to access the network must comply with. With NAC policies can be enforced before or after end stations gain access to the network. NAC can be implemented as per admission NAC, where a host must, for example, be virus free or have patches applied before it can be allowed to connect to the device. Full submission NAC, where a host is being granted, denied permissions based on its actions after it has been provided with the access to the network. This is true. Um, and then this next one is a Microsoft online service used for patching up system vulnerabilities, improving system performance, or fixing code errors found in Windows software is known as, it's not the Action Center, <laughs> you type this in here. So this is the Windows security. It won't be, it definitely won't be this. It definitely won't be Action Center. It definitely won't be Windows Store has nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, so this would be Windows Update. Windows updates are tended to update patches and vulnerabilities on a Microsoft Windows operating system. So it would be that one. It wouldn't be any of these other ones. It just doesn't make any Windows Store is like actually go to the store and you know, I'll type it in here because you probably just like you guys should know this, but um, I'm gonna type it in here anyway. Um, obviously, you just to download stuff has nothing to do with that. So, all right. Next question. A basic countermeasure against applications uh, related vulnerabilities include avoiding applications from unknown sources, keeping their ready install apps up to date with current patches and bug fixes. Yeah, you always want to update your, your, your software, even your iOS devices or whatever, like even your Android devices, you want to make sure everything's up to date. Like you wouldn't want to keep a vulnerability on the on a computer or or a laptop, any type of endpoint. That makes sense. It's just update yourself, please, for the love of God, please, bro. If I want to update your stuff, it's important, right? It's a mobile device deployment model that allows employees to use a private mobile de private mobile devices for accessing companies' restricted data and applications. It's called BYOD. This is bring your own device. Or as I jokingly say, BYOB, bring your own beer, um, just to remember it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, and then this one is, which which answer is listed below refers to potential IT security vulnerabilities? Uncompliant systems, yeah, that is one. Okay, untouched systems, yeah, that is correct. So it's like vulnerabilities, right, for IT security. Lack of security, software, antivirus, firewall, yep, that's another one. OS that got past their end of life so EO, eol is end of life so basically you have an operating system that's like windows 7 or whatever yeah so that's a vulnerability use of personal devices for work related like why would you do that that's not even smart all right so it's all the above i'm gonna hit finish and let's just see how many we got wrong we'll slowly go over it so ddos attack uh resource exhaustion this is true this is zero day this is a social engineering spoofing. When I said before, it wouldn't be any of these. These are just like, these two are like virus related. This is an email sent, right? Um, this guy's is a trusted source. So you use spoofing and you can do social engineering. You can actually call and pretend you're like Best Buy or whatever. That's a real thing. People do that a lot these days. These are the three answers is correct. Brute force. Yep. Dictionary attack. Insider threat. You don't want to disgruntle employee that's insider threat. So make sure you make make sure you keep your employees happy or make sure you don't hire someone that's disgruntled. Uh input validation is correct. These three three answers is correct. True is the answer to that one. Remember, it's none of these, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Windows update. This is true. BUI would bring your own device. All of the above. And we got all of them right. And then that's it, man. That's it for today. I'll stop sharing. That's it for, for me. That's all I got for you, for you guys for today. If this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Please like my video. Please comment down below if you want to see more videos on CompTIA questions. I don't really do a lot of these, but I definitely do want to make a course in A plus at some point, like me actually teaching it and actually and actually um teaching A plus like what like the one one zero one 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 zero two. Me actually teaching it like Mike Myers and Professor Messers. Maybe in the future, I don't know when, but at some point I will do that.
But with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Peace. Later.